Hey everybody, welcome back to Techmark Gaming and Reviews. Today, I'm gonna be upgrading my iPhone 16 Pro Max to iOS 26.2. I'm excited for this because I have my iPhone on iOS 18 since launch. I wanted to wait a few months just to let Apple fix those bugs before jumping in. I've been hearing a lot of great things about iOS 26, the new features, new visuals, and a liquid glass design. So yeah, it really feels like the right time. I'm going to be updating my phone and just going over a few different features that I noticed right away. Before I get into it, be sure to smash that like button and comment below and let me know if you guys upgraded to iOS 26 and what device do you have. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Techmark Gaming and Reviews so I can be recommended to more gamers and tech enthusiasts like yourself. In the meantime, let's get into it. First things first, before you update, you want to make sure that you go into your settings app, tap your iCloud profile, and make sure that your iPhone is backed up so you can have that information inside the cloud just in case something goes wrong. Once that's done, you can head over to the software update tab and you will see that we have iOS 26.2 release candidate, which pretty much gives you early access before the general public gets it. As you guys can see, I'm inside of the iOS public beta group. So basically I get the newer updates before they come in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that update button and accept the terms and conditions and let it do its thing. For me, it took roughly about 45 minutes to fully download and install. So I'm going to hit continue. And the first thing that we have is summarized notifications, which is powered by Apple intelligence It's still in beta, but basically it's going to group your notifications and give you quick summaries of what they're about. So you basically have different groups like news and entertainment, communication and social media and other apps. I'm going to check everyone just so we can see how it works. Then we get another prompt that's about priority notifications, which highlights the notifications that matters most to you on your lock screen. I'm definitely going to turn this on. Next, we got the camera control button, which is actually going to launch the actual camera app compared to the visual intelligence that I never really use, which is a good step in the right direction. So we're going to hit continue. And as you can see, they're trying to tell us a little bit more about iOS 26 and all of the great features that they added. We're actually going to go through a few features in this video so you guys can see how this actually performs. I'm going to hit get started. And as you guys can see, I'm on my home screen. And the first thing that I notice is the newer updated icons. So everything looks a lot more glass like as you guys may know, the liquid glass is a big part of this update. The folders, the notifications coming in definitely has that more translucent feel. Swiping through the home screen feels pretty on par with iOS 18, so I don't have any complaints there. And honestly, everything feels a lot modern, especially when you go into the app library. As you can see, the search bar is basically like glass, which is pretty cool. Clicking inside the folder, you can see that we have a glass like texture, which is pretty nice as well. And honestly, whoever designed this needs a raise. Opening up applications is pretty smooth. As you guys can see, we still have that 120 hertz display still doing its job. Especially on video apps like TikTok, things run really smooth and I can't complain. Next, let's take a look at the notification center. The time, widgets, and notifications have that smooth liquid glass coating. Even if I swipe to the left to bring up more options, the buttons look pretty cohesive. Now for my lock screen, as you guys can see, things are pretty simple. I got my flashlight at the bottom left. All I got to do is click this and it has that liquid glass feel to it. And I can adjust the brightness from my dynamic island. And at the bottom right is my Tesla app which is going to open up the application. If it can't read my face, it's going to bring up this password menu. And man, I got to say the liquid glass is all over this OS. Now, if we press and hold the lock screen, we have some customization options. So you can go to different lock screens that you created and adjust the time. As you guys can see, I can pull this down and my widgets will go to the bottom of the screen. On top of that, you can also pinch to zoom based off of what you like. And if you want to create a new lock screen, you can hit the plus button and you can see that there's tons of different wallpapers that you can choose from. If you click color, you can create your own gradient and go through the color wheel. There's pre-selected colors that you can choose from to set the mood. It's kind of crazy that you get this color picker that has the grid, spectrum and sliders inside of it, which is normally inside of Mac OS, but it's on an iPhone. So I really can't complain about this feature. Inside the music application, you will see that we have a newer redesign. As you guys can see at the bottom, we have the nice liquid glass effect. So you can go ahead and scroll and you will see that it's basically translucent and it looks a lot more modern. Now, if we click the home button, you will see that we have different tabs. So we have the home, new, radio and library. And when they're selected, it looks like a magnifying glass and it gives it a really nice touch. You can also slide your finger between tabs, which you couldn't do on iOS 18. Inside of more on a music player, if you click that, you see a bigger drop down menu that has liquid glass as well. 
You can also find the same type of layout inside the app store so you can go through different tabs and slide your finger across. Inside the control center, you can see that we also have liquid glass. And honestly, this looks really nice. The icons are on point and I can see everything. When I installed iOS 26 on my iPhone 13, it did not look this good. Also inside of messages, if you click into your contact profile, we can set different backgrounds. So you can click suggestions and you can see that we have different colors that we can swipe through. Once you choose it, the whole thread will be a different color. Now that's insane. Inside the settings app, you can see that we have the search bar at the bottom and it also has that liquid glass feel to it. The icons are nice and bold. And whenever you want to go back, you can easily just swipe back compared to going to the top left corner and clicking that back button. That saves you so much time. And lastly, we have a game application that's going to come in handy for people out there that like to play games directly on their phone. You now have a dedicated hub that's going to give you more information on new games, games that you purchased, Apple Arcade, and what your friends are playing. You can also launch games directly from this application, which is pretty nice. And a bonus new feature is the new camera design. So you guys can see that we have a more simplified interface at the bottom left corner. You can jump right into your photo library. You do have a more simplified video and photo mode for the average person. So you can choose between different photo styles based off of different filters. So if you like to have something that feels a lot more brighter on your skin tone, then you can do so with these filters. There's also more options at the top so you can change the resolution or the frame rate without having to jump into the settings. The flash, exposure, and action buttons are so much bigger, so it's easy to see and activate. Now there's so many other features inside of this iOS update that I can't cover it in one video, but I will say my battery is definitely going to be draining a lot more faster since there's an ongoing device setup going on in the background, which is essentially indexing all of my files and the software itself. Before I update it, I was sitting at about 80%, but now as you guys can see, I'm at 47%, so my battery definitely took a hit just to install this update. Here's my battery health. As you guys can see, I'm at 93%. I'm gonna go into power mode and turn on adaptive power, which is gonna use Apple intelligence to extend my battery life throughout the day by turning off certain features that I'm not using at that current time. In addition to that, I also have a Mophie battery case that's going to come in handy whenever I need some extra juice. It's going to give me an additional 50% battery life, which is pretty good. And it really came in handy around 830. As you guys can see, my battery was super low. I think I had about 13% left. And by the time I was done charging, I had about 64% left, which is exactly what I need. If you guys want to see a full review, then I'll leave a card in the top right corner of this video and a link in the description. But overall, iOS 26.2 really feels refined and I really don't have any upgrade remorse. I'm excited to see what Apple adds in the future updates. I'll be doing more iPhone videos like tips, tricks and wallpapers and more. So if that's something that you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Deuces.